Okay, our 92's 305 is on the hook, and we're on the job with phase three of our Lean Green Street Machine project. A few weeks ago, we challenged ourselves to pump up the power in this Camaro we bought for four and a half grand, and at the same time, make it even more fuel efficient. In phase one, we reprogrammed the computer, changed all the fluids to synthetic, gave it new plugs, wires, and distributor components, and installed a cold air kit. A week later in phase two, we upgraded the trans with a shift kit, added a converter lockup controller, plus installed headers and a larger cat-back exhaust system. Also, we upgraded the electric fan and water pump. With those two stages combined, we gained 20 horsepower and 40 foot-pounds of torque. At the same time, we improved mileage from 20 to 22 miles a gallon. Now it's time to get a little more aggressive with our small block. See, we've got a few tricks up our sleeve that are going to make this thing run a lot more efficient, lose a little bit of weight, and even make more horsepower. First, remove the valve covers and lift off the intake manifold. Next, the rockers. And then the push rods can go. Then with a pry bar, loosen and remove the cylinder heads. Now, use a magnet to remove the lifters then the lifter retainers. Next, pull off the lower pulley and the harmonic balancer. After that, roll the motor over to drain out the coolant. After removing the oil pan, the timing set can come off. And we're ready to remove the cam and rear main seal. At this point, the oil pump and pickup can also go. Now we need to turn the crank so we can stamp the rods for reference. Then remove the rod and piston assemblies, the main caps, and finally the crank. Is that fast enough? <laughs> now the guys at Huntsville Engine and Performance will do the three-angle valve job, bore and hone the block, and balance the rotating assembly. But first, I'm going to put a contour edge on the crankshaft's counterweights as soon as I give it a bath. This is something you want to do before machining, just in case you nick one of the journals. Radiusing the edges of the counterweights will reduce drag on the crank as it spins through the oil. Also, by smoothing this side only, it keeps oil away from the spinning mass of the rods. Now it's ready to go to the machine shop along with the block and heads. And that's where they'll turn down the mains and the rods to get it with inspect, and then they'll go ahead and balance it. They added some weight to compensate for what I took off the six counterweights before they balanced it. Then they polished the journals. And while that was going on, the machinist was boring the cylinders. Then he bolted up a torque plate to hone the cylinders for a crosshatch finish. They also cut the valve seats for a three-angle valve job. And always do your homework before you hire a machine shop to work on your block. Ask around and see who's got a good reputation. The guys at Huntsville Engine and Performance did a great job as usual. So once we get everything loaded up, we'll head back to our shop and start putting it all together. So we'll see you after the break. It's time to put our Lean Green Camaro's motor back together after a trip to the machine shop. In addition to the block and crankshaft, those guys also resized our connecting rods. Now here's where they took weight off the balancing tabs and they added new hardware, so these guys look good to go. Right, we just got finished installing bearings in our block and this time we're gonna try something new from Federal Mogul. It's their new A-series bearings that actually have silicone mixed in with the aluminum and tin. Now the silicone is there for wear resistance and believe it or not, the tough surface can actually polish the journals of the crankshaft. Now we can lube up the bearings and drop in the crankshaft. Before we put our main caps on, I'm going to show you all how to check your clearances without all those expensive tools. This one's called Plastic Gauge, and you can pick it up at any auto parts store for about a buck. Lube up the journal and place about one inch of string on it. Then drop on the cap and torque it down. Then remove the cap and place the paper gauge next to the flattened string. It should be between two thousandths, which is the green bar, 
and three thousandths, which is the white bar. We're in the ballpark. Now, if your plastic gauge is crushed too much, we don't have enough clearance, and we'd end up with a bearing failure. Now, to fix that, we would have to take the crankshaft back to the machine shop so they could polish it for more clearances. Now, if it wasn't crushed enough, we have too much clearance, we'd end up with low oil pressure. If that was the case, we would use a set of X bearings, which are thicker. With the main caps in place and oil on the bolts, we can torque them to 70 foot-pounds. The camshaft we're sliding in this block is a Performer Plus from Edelbrock. Now it's a good choice for a daily driver motor because of its smooth idling and low to mid-range torque. The duration at 50 thousandths is 212 on the intake, 222 on the exhaust. And with the camshaft in place, we can install the factory cam plate and fasteners using some Loctite. Now it goes without saying, anytime you swap out a camshaft, it's smart to go ahead and replace the timing set. Now this one's a double roller that we got from Edelbrock and we're gonna install it straight up. There's no need to splurge for a new timing cover since the old one's just fine, as long as you use new gaskets to keep everything sealed up. All right, to finish the rotating assembly, we fitted our resized rods with a set of Federal Mogul bearings and the lighter flat top pistons came from Speed Pro. Now these things are gonna fit a little tighter than normal and that's because of a special aluminum alloy they use. It doesn't let the piston expand as much as others. Now they come with rib skirts and that's for better oil retention. And as soon as we install the rings, we can drop them into the block. Remember to oil the piston pins, the cylinder walls, the pistons and rings themselves and put assembly lube on the rod bearings. Now we install the gaskets with some silicone onto the rear main housing that we clean with our blast it all machine. We opted for a low budget upgrade for the Camaro's oiling system, a basic OE style pump, pick up and drive, again from Federal Mogul. Before final installation, however, we're going to check for clearance with the oil pan in place. Then we can weld the pickup to the pump. Well, next, he ain't pretty, but he still works. Well, I'm not talking about Buddy or Mike. I'm talking about this stock oil pan, which we're going to reuse after a little modification. Now, this is one of the cheapest ways to free up horsepower. It's an oil crank scraper. It removes oil from the crank and rods and frees up a little extra horsepower. Here's how it goes on. First, a little silicone, then we put it in place and it should be fitted about 45 thousandths from the rods and 35 thousandths from the counterweights. Now, a new gasket goes in place. Thanks, buddy, and by the way, I think you're pretty. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> We're also gonna reuse the stock GM heads that we painted up a little bit along with new gaskets and hardware. Plus, since it's always good to use matching components, we're gonna swap springs for these Edelbrock sure seats to get the most out of that cam we install. Now, it might be a lot easier to do all that work right here on the bench, but tell you what, we're gonna do it with the heads on the block just like you do it at home. That is, after we get these things bolted up and take a short break. Tell you what, I like the way these Felpro bolts come with thread sealant already on them. Yeah, it makes life a lot simpler. Yeah, it's quicker too. Now, as promised, we're going to show you how to swap springs in your heads with them bolted to the block. And hey, to make things fair, heads, I show them, tails, you show them, okay? All right. You ready? Yep. All right. Oops. Kind of looks like tails from here. First, make sure you cover the valley with a rag and the intake ports with tape to prevent valve locks from falling into the block. Next, to keep the valves in the head, you need to run air into each cylinder using a compression gauge hose and your air compressor hose. Then install this handheld spring compressor. And with the spring fully compressed, you can remove the locks and the old spring. Finally, use the compressor to install the new spring along with the locks. Give the valves a light tap to make sure the locks are in place. After that, we can install our new Edelbrock hydraulic roller lifters. Then the lifter retainers, the valley pan. With lube in place, we can install the push rods. And the roller rockers that we ordered from Summit. These are 1.52. That will give us a little more lift than our stock 1.5s. With that finished, 
a little black dupa color paint will dress things up a bit before we move on. All right, we could get away with reusing the stock intake manifold, but there's a little bit of a downfall. The intake runners actually split off to two cylinders. So we're gonna use this Edelbrock Performer that's a little taller for more volume. And check out these runners, they go to individual cylinders. So that's gonna give us more horsepower and torque. If the motor you're rebuilding has a carburetor on it, you wanna take it apart, clean it, and replace a few of the components. Same thing applies with our TBI unit. It got a good bath, and we're gonna replace the injectors. Now we got our stock replacements from the O'Reilly parts store down the road, and it comes with all the gaskets and seals that we might need. So first we remove the cover and pull out the old injectors. See the little pin? The new injector pin slides into that relief. After applying lube to the new O-rings, the injector can go in place. Then with the new gaskets in place, we can put the cover back on. And with the spacer in place, we can bolt the TBI onto our new intake manifold. There's one final component for this engine. This rubber ring between the stock balancer halves gets brittle over time and well, this outer ring could actually come loose. So this lighter, smaller replacement from Pioneer could be pretty cheap insurance against engine damage. Well, now comes the least exciting part of this rebuild, uh, reinstalling the factory accessories distributor, then dropping the motor in, making all the connections, checking everything. You got time for all that? Of course not. You want to move on to the fun stuff like firing this thing up and seeing how much power we made, right? We can do that after I finish filling up the motor with this break-in oil from Royal Purple and Buddy installs those Denso Iridium Plus plugs. Oh, and tires? Yeah, we got tires. Wider tires are better for handling, but since we're going lean and green, these Yokohama Avid Tourings we got from Summit are going to work better for us. See, they're narrower, so there's less of a contact patch on the road, which translates to better fuel economy. Now, we're going to use our Patton's nitrogen tank to fill these things up. Now, nitrogen doesn't expand or contract as much as air due to temperature changes, so that's going to be good for up to 3% better fuel economy and a lot better tread wear. All right, we just got done driving the car about 400 miles to break in the new engine. And we've also installed the SunPro vacuum gauge on the A-pillar. Now what that's gonna do is let us know when the engine's under a load and it's using the most fuel. Now we're gonna drive it around with all the new components and see how they do on fuel mileage. So let's fill it up. Hey, Gally, I think we've got a reason to celebrate. Not only better fuel economy, but on our final run, 178 horsepower, 259 foot-pounds of torque. Now, let's see where we've come since day one of this project. From a baseline of 144 horsepower, 224 foot-pounds of torque, and 20.3 miles a gallon, to this, an improvement of 34 horses, 35 foot-pounds of torque, and almost three miles a gallon. Well, it's so long to the Lean Green Street Machine, but we'll be right back. Hey, buddy, will you bring me that cam card? Okay. All right, the camshaft is often considered the brains of any engine, so you don't want to cause it or yourself any headaches when it comes to excessive wear on the cam lobes. Now, it all starts by getting the proper valve height and spring pressures. Now, it's not all that hard to do, and it won't cost you much of anything but time. First, let's get acquainted with the card that comes with your camshaft. Now, it has the specs for the spring requirements in this box. This first number is for the springs recommended for this camshaft. These numbers are the open and closed spring rates, and they're measured in pounds. This number here is the installed spring heights, and they're measured in inches. All right, to show you how to measure valve and spring heights, we're gonna remove one spring and a valve stem seal from this Edelbrock aluminum head. Using a spring compressor, compress the spring, remove the locks, then the spring. Okay, now you install your height mic over the valve, install your retainer, 
and your locks, pull up on the retainer, hold in the height mic, and unscrew it to expand it. Make it tight, and that's what we come up with, 1.845, and that's our installed height. If you don't have a height mic, a veneer caliper will work just as well. It will get you in the ballpark. Just basically put it on the head, bring it to the bottom of the retainer, And we got 1.847. Here's a little tip. Put some tape on the ruler so you can reference it a lot quicker because you got 16 valves you got to check. So we'll put our spring in here, pull it on down to our reference mark. As you can see, we only got 100 pounds and we should have 130. This is where the shims come in handy. They come in three different sizes. You got a 15, a 30, and a 60 thousandths thick. So we'll put a 60 in there and see what kind of pressure we get. Bring it back down to the mark again. We've got 120. What we're shooting for is 130. That's it. It takes two 60,000 shims, so they go under the spring and then assemble the head. There is a certain way shims go. The serrations go down or where it says this side up. On the black ones, it doesn't matter which side goes down. Put on your shims. Put on your seal, your spring, retainer, and the locks. And then you want to give it a little bit of a tap to make sure these locks don't come flying off. And done. This procedure will take you a little bit of time to do. But it not only saves you money, but it also saves your cam from excessive wear and keeps your valves from floating at high RPMs. What's hotter than a 5.7 liter Hemi under your Mopar's hood? Well, how about one that's equipped with an air raid quick fit system? Now this thing features a cool air dam that seals to the underside of your hood to keep out that unwanted engine heat. It also comes with a reusable high flow air filter and this modular intake tube that resists heat better than steel or aluminum. Now these kits are available for 6.1 liter Hemis and V6s as well. As far as the price, they start out about 170 bucks. Next week, we're gonna get started on a project that's been a long time coming. A couple key words, Mustang and Turbo. I know you won't wanna miss it, so make sure you join us for another awesome episode of Horsepower.